Hey everyone, welcome back to Queer Women Rising. I'm your host, Sophia Spolino, and this episode is going to be a lot different than what I've shared before. Normally, I'm telling a story or interviewing a guest, but today I'm going to share a recording of one of my favorite episodes on someone else's show where they interviewed me. And you might not want to listen to this episode if you've been through religious trauma and you're not ready to create your own relationship with the divine in your own way. And if you're not there yet or you never plan to go there, because I understand as a queer person, it can be really traumatic to explore your faith again. It can be all re-triggering and frustrating but if you're in a space where you're open to reconsidering any sort of spirituality and perhaps even if like me you were raised really strict evangelical christian or you know someone who was and you've had trauma around that southern evangelical culture that you'd be open to hearing my story and encounter with jesus and for those of you who are new hi I am a 32-year-old lesbian. I came out late in life, late for me, like age 28, 29. And this story isn't something that I thought I would share, but I ended up having it kind of pulled out of me on Tara's podcast, Miss Tara Marino from the beautiful Soul Led Life podcast, which you should all go subscribe. She's incredible. She's got this beautiful mama bear energy. And she just gave me a safe place to share this story. I know that sometimes I feel, at least, I don't know if it's true, but I feel I'm a little too spiritual for all of the queer community. And I'm a little too uh, gay for the Christians to accept me. And before we go any further or I rule the episode, I want you to know that I really don't identify with traditional Christians because I don't think they want me. I don't think... They want me to feel like I belong, right? And uh, maybe you feel that same way. And that's okay. Uh, But where I'm at and where I've uh, ended up, what I've come to terms with is God isn't in a church or in a specific religion or in a specific text. God is inside of all of us. And I believe we were all created good. And if you're here and you're queer, then... I believe that God created us this way and that it's nothing that we need to change, but it took me a long time to get here. So if you're open to it, I'd love for you to hear my entire story, but specifically this interview showcases my encounter with Jesus, which is absolutely buckwild nuts. And I don't think I'd believe it if it wasn't my own story. So only listen if you have that open heart. Okay, let's roll the episode. Again, this is Miss Tara Marino interviewing me on her beautiful Soul Led Life podcast. Enjoy. Hello, hello, and welcome to the beautiful Soul Led Life podcast. Do I have a surprise for you today? I want to tell you how moved I was by this conversation with Sophia. So Sophia is a brand coach. She is a huge personality. She works with many businesses around social media, and she's just a firecracker. And if you, when you follow her, I should say on social media, you're going to see that. What I was so moved by in this interview is her heart. She literally is walking love. Now, this conversation, I will tell you, might bring up a couple of things inside of you. It might stretch you. It might stretch you on your vision of love. It might stretch you on your awareness of what other people move through in this lifetime. It may stretch you inside of hidden judgments that you may have towards yourself, towards others, towards the ability to receive unlimited love. So I encourage you, I invite you to move into this interview with such an open heart and allow yourself to receive what's here for you. Sophia is a masterpiece. Enjoy. Let me know. Hello, hello, bonjour, and welcome to the beautiful Soul Led Life podcast. You know, you have those days, you have those moments where you're just like, Okay, I just dropped in. I just dropped in. What is happening in my life? This is how I feel in this moment. 
I want to slow down a minute because this gorgeous soul in front of me, like I have a little bit like of a beating of my heart because she just really took me by surprise. You know, I've said this before, like the people that I have on the Beautiful Soul Led Life podcast, I either know or they've been introduced to me by an agency that I really respect. And I just feel like, is it a yes or is it a no? Is there something here? So that's my first yes. And then when I open to like, okay, God, what is here? I am always surprised, but I will tell you, there is something about this soul that you're about to meet. That is like the word that's coming forward for me is exquisite. She's exquisite. So I just want to like invite all of us to let go of any expectations, any preconceived notions, anything inside of us where we have ever in this lifetime or any other withheld our loving in any way. Mm -hmm. And I want to pour my heart and my love, Sophia, welcome to the beautiful solid life podcast. I, I am, I feel like I'm sitting beside myself right now being like, okay, I'm going to watch this. What is unfolding? Mm. You are stunning. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so honored to be here. I've loved stalking you, love learning about you, love what you bring to the table. And I think there's so many beautiful women on Instagram and we don't always get to see if they are the real deal. And as soon as you turn on the camera and your energy's this vibrant, like I can feel the holy in you. You're so set apart to lead. And I'm just very, very honored that you would have me on your show. It's so different than the typical business shows I get to be on. So oh, okay. grateful. <laughs> Thank you for being here in all the ways, in all the ways, yes. in the physical and the mental and the emotional and in the spiritual. I know I want to hear your story and hear what has brought you into this place. And I also really want to acknowledge, like you said, the holy in you. And I think oh, this is something you. that we often don't do for each other. And especially, I don't know, this is my experience. It might be different for all of us, but especially as women. Yeah. To look at each other, to acknowledge the beauty, the brilliance, and the holiness in one another from a space yes. of pure connection and creation without competition. Mm, yes. Yeah. Yes. I honor that in you. And I, I look up to the women who have gone before me, who have walked so we can run, so our generation can run, and you are one of them. And I'm so grateful for everyone listening who doesn't get to see us. I'm 31, about to be 32. I'm a super femme, very, gorgeous, very feminine. Gorgeous, strict, gorgeous. Thank you. Everyone's going to be on your Instagram and your TikTok and they're going to see. Go ahead, though. Oh, I can only like <laughs> dream of looking like you when I get to be your age, Tara. You're just... You're a vision. And so, but I am a feminine, lesbian, business coach, harpist, and inner spiritual human. And I'm so glad that we arrived here together. But in all transparency, I love getting to be on these platforms where I get to say, hey, guess what? Like, there's all these great things about me. And I always lead with being queer as my favorite personality trait. People say, is that your only one? And I say, no, but it was so important that I had someone to look to, to be able to rise, to get to where I am. And sadly, I didn't have a feminine queer woman to look to. And there's nothing wrong with Ellen, right? Like there's nothing wrong with these powerful women who have paved the way in some way, but they didn't look like me. And that's why it's so important that we honor the holy in each other. And it's like, because you're bold enough to use your voice and you look different than me and because you speak differently than me and because you do things differently than me, people are going to resonate with you perhaps over resonating with me. But it's so important that we all get up and use our voices. If you're called to be a leader, because if you are, you're going to be able to touch the heart of somebody that is so different than the woman beside you. And so it's not competition. It's like, if everyone can just grab the hands of different women and say, okay, let's go, baby. This is possible for you. Whatever it is for you, it's sharing that feminine energy and the being successful and being in flow and being able to communicate with people who might not know that's possible for them. And they might need to look to you to do it because they've only seen some guy in India tell them how to do it, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's 
I love this so much because it is, it's not about a look to me because I'm better or even no. look to me because I'm different. It's look to me because this is what I'm sharing and this is who I am. And if it resonates with you to look further into who you are and yeah. stand in that, then let's go. 100%. Yeah. I didn't get to look at someone who could reflect back to me like, Oh, sweetheart, like you just must be gay. And I was raised really, really strict Christian and there's nothing wrong with the evangelical way. I still have a deep connection to Jesus, but I think the problem is there are those Christians that tell me you couldn't have a connection to Jesus because you're gay, because you chose this. And I'm like, I didn't choose this. I was watching Doris Day and Audrey Hepburn, like dreaming of kissing them as a little girl at age five. And people come out for different reasons. Maybe they've had abuse. Maybe they were just born like that. Either way is valid. However, you got to this place of this is my sexuality. But for me, it came from such a pure hearted little five year old place. And so I just wanted to let people know, like, it's okay. If if you have those thoughts, or even if they're your age, and they're not sure, and they're like, maybe I'm in between, I just don't know. It's okay to question and you can be successful. You you can look at other women who have gone before you, you just have to look for them. Yeah. Like it's possible. It's possible. There's examples of me. This gorgeous little five-year-old girl in you, right? That was having this experience. I know that when we talked a little bit before we pressed record, you were like, I really want to share my story. Yeah. I want to open that up for you. Like, again, not from any kind of performative place, like, oh, I have to share my story. Like, really from that place inside of you, what do you want to share? What was this like Mm. for you to arrive where you are? Yeah. Well, thank you for opening the door for me. So since I was little, I grew up really, really strict Christian. I was even homeschooled. I started playing the harp at five. So it was like the Christian harpist. That became my identity for sure. And I think there's all, anyone listening can think of something that their parents really spoke over them. And that could be something that was used to make you more powerful or actually used to put you in a box. And they probably meant it for good. And we can't blame them. We can only learn from it, right? Right. But it did end up putting me in a box. And I also grew up hearing negative things. I grew up in the South and from Louisiana. So we have that French culture here, a little different, a little (laughs) less refined than where you're coming from, Tara. (laughs) But we are taught to get married really young, don't have sex till marriage. So you don't really get to figure things out about yourself or what your preferences are. But get married young, have babies. I never really build anything as a woman. And I have this very interesting perspective of, I want to do both. I want to be a homemaker and in flow and also a powerhouse woman. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I want to do it all. But that wasn't something that I was taught. My mom actually told me, be very careful not to make a lot of money because if you do, your husband will never let you stop bringing in that income and you'll never be able to stay home and have that quality time with your children. And that was the dream for my mother because of what she had been through as a child. And I get that. That was her lack mentality that had gotten her to want to like prepare, prepare for us. Right. And I ended up getting married very young to an abusive man. Thankfully got out of that marriage. There was a counselor at church that should have never told me this because the evangelical church says, unless they physically beat you or cheat on you, you can't leave. But she was like during therapy one day and she was like, he is a narcissist and he's never going to change. And I don't believe that God wants this for you. And if you end up getting pregnant, what would happen to your child? And I'd always known I was gay, but I was not ready to come out. And I would have stayed with him forever because of the vow I made to God in front of my family and to myself, right? I'm a woman of my word. (laughs) But hearing her say that was kind of like my loophole for the Christian counselor to go, okay, honey, if you bring a child into this world, it's going to be dangerous for their mental health. And so I left and I ended up going through lots of things. And even after that point, got assaulted, what a journey, but I healed from that. And then I ended up finding a good man who helped me heal even deeper but we were really good friends Mm -hmm. and I couldn't really process that. Oh, this, this business partnership, we have this just great collaborative energy. We have, we were truly best friends, but when it came time to proposing and my parents had a jewelry store, he was picking up the diamond. We're talking about it. And I'm like, I can't get married. I couldn't really pinpoint it. He knew I was 
at this point, I thought I was by. He knew from day one going in, I said, but I'm going to choose my faith and not have any of these connections with women. But then Tara, during COVID, mm-hmm. my partner's always older. I'm an age gap girl. I love older humans. <laughs> during COVID, we're sitting down at the first time we can go back out to eat. Do you remember those days where you're like, yes, we can finally get back out, right? Well, he had type two diabetes. And so anyone who got too close to us, it would make me nervous. And no matter where you stood on the mask, no mask, whatever, I'm very much like, who cares? But my partner had just the sickness that I was worried about. I was worried about him. So I was like, if anyone came too close to us, I'd get a little bit nervous for his sake. So we're sitting down at this restaurant and we're talking about getting married. We're talking about the business. And he had a very famous brand that blew up years ago. Then it died down. It was a trend and he sold billions of these products, but then kind of lost his footing in the business world. And I was helping him build his brand back and we were getting it back into retail stores. And we're so proud of what we accomplished but I'm like, I can't marry him. I can't marry him. And this lady taps on my shoulder and goes, can I sit here? And I'm like thinking explicit B word, like back off six feet. That's what I'm thinking. Right. (laughs) And so she taps on my shoulder again. And I'm like, Oh my God, I have to turn around just like move. Like, you know what I mean? But when I turned around Tara, she was a woman that looked just like you. And I thought, (laughs) okay, you can sit here. (laughs) You're so pretty. Oh my gosh. And that night we walked out of the restaurant after talking to her. And I just thought, I told him, I said, I am just gay. I got to figure this out. And he said, you know what? I really love you. How about you just take the time to figure it out? We still stay in partnership, but just you explore. And everyone at this point was like, oh my God, they must be swingers. They must like, Mm -hmm. this man was so respectful. Mm -hmm. He never saw me kiss another girl. I didn't even, mm -mm. I was like on the hunt for like, okay. Am I going to find a partner? Yeah. And so I did that for a while. And then I met someone. And the moment I had my first interaction with her, I came home. And I did what everyone told me not to do. They said, you should just fake it out for another six months and save your money. And I said, I can't do that. It's out of integrity. And I came home and I just looked at him and he just goes, you're a lesbian, right? You're not just by." And it's over. Like everything we had built for three years, my picket fence life, my car, I worked for him, all my financial security gone. I had less than $10,000. My family at this point wasn't supporting me. I was told I'd never be blessed by the Lord because I'm homosexual. So how will I ever get my lifestyle back? But I did it anyway. And it was the scariest six months of my life. But I transitioned, I moved into a small space and I saved and started hustling, building a social media agency. And then I quickly went from praying to God, how can I make $4,000 a month as an independent woman? (laughs) How how am I going to pay to keep up with my Botox? I mean, that was the scariest thing. (laughs) I was so scared. Like, I'm not, oh, you're crying. Yeah. It was so scary, Tara. When I tell you, like, it's not just a story, like, I mean, even in this small space, I've stayed here because now I just save my money and I travel and it's beautiful. But I moved into here with just boxes and an empty space and I cried. No family came to help me put together furniture. I went from having a dream life to putting together Wayfair furniture, to putting together just what I, I mean, no offense, I considered these things garbage. I came into the world with a little silver spoon in my mouth. And I worked really hard after living in a trailer park with my ex-husband to get to where I am with this man, really building a life together to nothing, it all being gone at 29. So waking up thinking like, where in the heck? And within 18 months, I built a business that was massive beyond my wildest dreams. I had scaled with wonderful clients, mostly women in their 50s who needed help with their social media. And I blew them up. One of my greatest clients is Darnell Cox. I don't know if any of y'all follow her, but she does healthy aging and she's all over the news now. And just just to see what she's been able to do after blowing up like 100,000 followers on Instagram, working with me for six months. She's like an example. A lot of them were just public figures that I am under NDA. But I was like, if I could do this for them, what would happen if instead of feeding them and giving them the fish, I taught them how to fish? I was like, I'm going to go into coaching. So I built something substantial, multi six figures, and then pivoted into coaching. And now I coach women around the world how to build their own brands, how to go viral, and how to actually sell their services online. Because so many people know how to be influential without selling. Mm -hmm. So... That's what I've done. That's my story in a nutshell. Ah! Oh my God. (laughs) So many golden. uh, Okay. You said early on when you were speaking, 
you know, you're like, I'm a woman of my word. And it yeah. was initially, it sounded like that piece, like, okay, so I should stay, right? I should stay in this marriage. I'm a woman of my word. And yet what I hear in the courageous choice that you made is a woman of your word in that you're a commitment to God, fullness, to yeah. Yeah. and mm-hmm. that's what you chose. That's been your commitment all along. Oh, I love no. that. Goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, I always feel like, you know, the sin was never, it was never the divorce, if you want to use the word sin, which I use going against yourself as the Course of Miracles describes it. Yeah. So it's like going against that, what you know, that little piece of God that's in us. But the real sin, if you want to call it that, was getting married in the first place. I knew better. But we all do things like that, don't we? <laughs> we all do things. And it's like, like I'm, I personally, I don't believe in sin. In that, I, I don't believe that we've ever done anything wrong. We do the best we can with what we can at that moment. And that's it. There's mm. nothing. That's it. That's it. Mm. That's it. <laughs> There's no room for guilt, shame, any of it. No, mm. I'm raised Catholic. So fit my fair share of moving through that. Yes. So this courage, I'm I'm not, oh my gosh, I so want to also bless this beautiful man that saw you, this partner that you spent this stunning time with. And I don't mean bless from like a feeling sorry for or victim capacity. I mean, bless him in his strength. Yeah. You know what? He gave me everything that like all of his heart. Yeah. All of his heart. And he he had a lot of ridicule, too, because people said, oh, like, that's a sugar baby to you. And we made so many, like, pieces of content to blow up on the Internet, like, as a joke about that. But I helped him build his whole brand. He's back to being famous and making 50K plus months. And yeah. I'm proud of him. Good for the both of you. Like, what an extraordinary soul curriculum that you both have. Yes. It's fulfilled. Like, mm-hmm. like we're going to come together. We're going to fulfill this whatever we want to call it. You know, we don't need to compartmentalize it, but wow. Yeah. Like he was able to give me, and I am a full blown lesbian. Like after being with the woman, I realized, okay, I never want to be with a man in that capacity again, but I can look back on every experience I had with him and be like, God was totally there. He always treated me with respect and he honored and he cherished me. He really did. He really did. And that will be probably my last divine masculine that doesn't, I mean, I know we all have masculine feminine energy, but my last experience with a man and I'm glad it was him because it was a safe place, especially between the marriage and him. I was assaulted and he just loved me through that because there was a lot of damage that had been done. Yeah. I mean, that's what's clear. And that was what was clear as soon as that we came on together. Like there's just love that just pours through your eyes. Oh, it it, was there. It's there. And I love this. I'd love to hear more about like, there's these containers that as a society, as a collective consciousness, to an extent, we box in like, okay, here's the Botox. This is okay or not. Okay. Here's the business. This is how we run it. This is okay or not. Okay. Here's my sexuality. This is okay or not. Okay. And this opportunity to live into all of it. Mm. to really yes. allow all of it. So I'd love to hear where you are inside of that conversation for yourself. Yeah. Okay. Well, first of all, let's honor the fact that you're letting your hair go gray. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's hot. <laughs> and you're like into your Botox. Like you just look so, f- you're, you're a woman embodied. Like you're just like, I know who the freaking frog I am. And it's magical. It's like in a moment, but I would, the, all I have to say to that is thank you because that really is how I feel inside. It really yeah. is. Like we were playing with this in the beginning, like there are no rules. No and like rules. witnessing you talk about God, talk about your sexuality, talk about business, talk about like, it's this, I want to hear how you feel about that. Like what, what kind <laughs> well, of how that? I feel is we have to show up in our fullness to give other women permission to step out of their boxes right? So every time, and it might feel really small to you, but today I went to my small town country club, wealthy older people with my queer hat on. And I dress, you know, in my complete put together whiskey active with Tory Burch sneakers to the T. No offense, not to sound cocky, but every little ritual man's dream, right? But yet I've got a gay hat on and I'm just like, here I am. 
And here's being the fullness of who you are sets someone else free where they're like, wait, she's getting to take up space here. And it's okay if it's your first thought of going, wait, does she belong here? Because we're programmed for that, right? So don't judge yourself for that. But Mm -hmm. I know that that's something that I needed to see. I needed to see examples of this, especially in the rural areas. You just moved to a rural area, right? Mm -hmm. Seven years ago, we're in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. So we built the beach house seven years ago. And we were planning on staying, but here we are seven years later. It's beautiful. Special about these little pockets. Yes. And I'm sure that the magic you bring to that area helps so many other women just pop off in their freedom in such a unique way, because I, I have family in the Carolinas and it's an interesting mindset for sure. It's just like here. It's true. And you said when you started that story, you were like, you might think this is a small thing. I don't think it's a small thing at all. You know, being able to walk into any kind of space in all of who we are. There's there's like this part of us, and I'd love to hear what your feeling about this has been. There was a lot of my life where I wanted to be seen. I wanted to be recognized. I felt validated if I could be seen by someone else because I was so afraid of being misunderstood that all I wanted was to please really see me. Mm. And one of the big shifts in the past few years has been the awareness of the visibility to myself. Can I gift myself full permission to see all of who I am? Mm. Does that resonate with you? Is that something that you walk in? Oh, yeah. So to integrate like the shadow and the light to to see all the things and be like, okay, this is what it is. But also I'm always working on myself. I'm always doing the work, but to, yeah, to see everything and not have to put it in that box like we were talking about. Like, okay, there's these parts of me that are always going to want to be able to have a partner that does this or that, but that doesn't take away from my also boss girl energy either. So being able to play with that dichotomy and then also just, okay, I'm really, really gay and I want to be seen as really, really gay because I finally found a box that feels expansive and it actually makes me feel validated because I had to put it away for so long. But then for every other box that bothers me, it's like, nope, not putting myself in that. Yeah. Like I won't put, I say inner spiritual or Christian mystic because there's so much flexibility there. Yeah. Yeah. So as you say it, it feels less like a box and more like a star. Oh, I like that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like a- <laughs> Yeah. Like I'm thinking of like being in Girl Scouts when we get these little like badges. It feels more like that. Like this is my star. Okay. Yes. I'm proud yes. to sign and show it in this way. So how did you inside of yourself, given how you were raised and regardless of what we know to be true inside of ourselves, there's the embodiment of that truth that I feel really yes. stresses us. So being raised with this idea of, you no, know, if you are this way, then you cannot have a relationship with Jesus, that you are somehow separate. Yeah. How do you inside of yourself then embody and live into the truth of that oneness? Oh, it's so good. There's so many ways to go with this. First of all, I'm told nearly every day on TikTok that I don't really know Jesus and I'm going to go to hell. And that's where my biggest audience is. So it's like viral, crazy, just madness, but I have fun playing with it. But it does, sometimes words do hit you, no matter how strong you think you are. And it's just like, oh, that's terrible. One, my relationship with Jesus or any divine spirit is me and that divine's relationship. And okay, this is like getting really woo woo. Do you think really? you're no, all the way? I'm not like, <laughs> okay. all the way. There's no, no limits. Okay, so I actually never talked about this on a podcast before, but I'll do it. So I, for Thanksgiving, was kind of nervous about going to my family's house. And it's not because my family wasn't loving to me. We had already gotten to that very loving place. Great relationships. Me, my parents' relationships are back really thriving and great. But I had a dream. It was a nightmare that I asked my little sister and my father, I know you love me, but do you believe I'm going to hell? And in the dream, they couldn't answer me. And I started like choking, crying and had to run out of the house. 
It was so, yeah. yeah. And I'm not going to cry now because <laughs> I don't want to do that here. But it was one of those things that really just tore me up. And I woke up like in a panic attack in a ball. And it was like three in the morning. And that night I went to bed crying my eyes out. Once again, I will admit one of the things that I've done since I was really little is I pray to God to make me straight. So I would just say, pray the gay away. So I would just really, really try. And I will admit that I've gotten pretty good about not doing this anymore, except Tara, when I'm going through a breakup, that's really painful. I am particular about my partners. I'm particular about how they smell and and the way they carry themselves polished and blah, blah, blah. And, And we need more women in the queer community to represent like this woman who's embodied and polished because there's not enough of them out there. So I get into scarcity mindset of, oh my God, I'm never going to find a partner that I can like really respect and like just love, how, honestly, how they smell, just a beautiful woman. So I start crying and I ask God to just make me straight because it'd be easier. There's always men trying to date me, right? So it's like, I spent that night crying. I'm talking, I fell asleep on my Bible with snot coming out of my nose <laughs> and just, just I'm always praying. I'm like, God send my double portion baby, whoever she is. Like all the pain that I've went through, I always say like anything you lose, you'll always get back 10 times more. And it's just like a mantra that I say over and over. So I was praying that, but I went to sleep. I had that terrible nightmare and I wake up at three in the morning and it's me on my Bible, like waking up snot everywhere. And I'm just like, Oh, this is a terrible dream. And I've been crying. And I was so sad. I just continued crying when I woke up and I could feel this weird feeling of knowing there was a man in the room, but not being afraid. And I've been assaulted. I'm also just a lesbian. I don't like the presence of men in my bedroom, but it was weird. It was like, it was a safe thing. And it was, this is the craziest thing. It was a knowing, it wasn't a hearing. It was a knowing that it was Jesus. And it was as if Jesus wrapped me up like in like a little parental spoon And like was behind me hugging me. And then I felt like this almost like a weighted blanket over my body. Now, this was not people might be like, were you sleeping? Were you having a panic attack? Was it one of those like dreams? No, I could move. I was able to turn my head, grab Kleenex, whatever I needed to do. But it was like a gentle weighted blanket of like that Bible verse, your banner over me is love. And that was all I could hear. And it was like, I love you and quit questioning how I made you. And it it was as if I could see Jesus as an artist and it was like, you're questioning my artwork and that's offensive, but Jesus did not use the word offensive, (laughs) but it was just this download, this instant of, Oh my God, I'm offending the greatest artist of all time by asking to be made in black and white rather than color. And it was this instant, just peace. And it was like this, if I can give you this piece now, we could put this to rest. Will you promise to tell the queer community about me? Because I actually love them. It's people that said that I don't love them. And I was like, okay, yes, but bring me my wife. So I'm still waiting on the wife, but I am very committed to following through on my end of the deal. <laughs> she's here. You know she's yeah. here and she knows you're here. And, you know, it's just that timing. You know, my sister and my brother, my sister met the love of her life at 44. My brother left the love of his life at 40. Wow. And they did not settle. They did not say, you know, so, oh, there's, oh, okay. Can we just, I I love to hear it. Thank you for that evidence. Yes. Yes. Can we just have a moment for this stunning encounter? It was wild. It was wild. And this is the first time I've been able to like talk about it without crying. Cause normally I start crying and it, it was so pure. It was just, I'm so grateful for you, for your power, for your willingness to open to this extent and to share Thank this. You. <sighs> oh my God. I'm just. Thank you for witnessing it. It's a lot for someone to take in without them going, you're crazy. No, no. <laughs> it's like, there's such purity. There's such love. Like literally you're walking up. You are walking up. Yeah. Yeah. You are too, though. I can feel it. You've created yeah. a safe space to share, you know? Yeah. I, th- I mean, if that level of no matter what it is, you know, we all have these things in our lives that we could, the ego could say, you deserve to be punished because 
you're not good enough because you're dark because of this. Like we all, and we all have the things we could all make a really great case. I know I certainly could be like, yeah. And look at all the evidence of why this is true. Yeah. The courage it takes for us to let go of that and to see the truth, like what you're saying in the masterpiece of what God made and not deny that. It was a download. It was, and all I could think is I want to tell more people about this experience and What's crazy is so many queer women, they've said they had similar where like Jesus literally appeared to them or knowing. Yeah. So I'm really excited to know that I was not, this wasn't an isolated incident. I wasn't special. Like I know I'm special, but Jesus comes to everybody or whatever source of God, it's going to reveal itself to you if you're open. And I think we have to, one thing I heard from this older woman I looked up to when I was little, I would go to like do my nursing home ministry and like my Bible camps. But regardless, I got wisdom from her, even if I don't agree with the camps that I went to. And she was Miss Ruby Charbonneau. And she told me, sometimes God has you on a high stool. Sometimes God has you on a low stool. But when you're low, it's so you can look up at him. And I think that's when we're the most open. Like we'll get to these places in our lives where we could only be that receptive if we had that much shit hit the fan. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We're in that much need. Yeah. It is a fantastic thing, isn't it? When we can let go of control, like seriously let go of it because we know the truth that we're not in control anyway. So yeah, (laughs) what are we doing? (laughs) We might as well. We might as well surrender. So one of these on your Instagram, so I'm not on yeah. TikTok. Oh, I have enough. <laughs> and I totally respect and honor and, and admire in the most beautiful, pure way. You're like extraordinary over there. So I was on your Instagram and I was having so much fun with this morning routine that you were talking yes. about because I'm all about morning routines and the prioritization of God, of self and of business that you so beautifully embody. And again, this really beautiful presentation of yourself where you prioritize beauty, your skin, your Botox, like whatever it is that feels most in alignment for you. So anything that you want to speak to on any of those topics that feels like. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think we hear from all these gurus online about these dream morning routines and we're like, how do we implement that in a real life? Like, Hello, there's reality versus Instagram. So the thing that I categorize my day into is prioritizing my connection to God. So there's three containers, but then everything else in there is flow. So it's God, myself, and then my business. So first connecting with God and having whatever that looks like for the day, which again, I am such a mystic. Sometimes I'm reading the Sophia code. Sometimes right now I'm doing a novena from one of my Catholic friends and I'm like loving it. I'm loving St. Anthony right now. So that's where we're at. Sometimes it's Mary Magdalene. (laughs) Have you studied Mary Magdalene, by the way, Tara? I have not. And I had one of my clients, I think it was last month, say that she was reading Mary Magdalene, but I'm the same. Like I'll pick up a text that I'm like, there's something here for me. It might. Yes. Yeah. So no. Okay. You need to get Mary Magdalene right. revealed. Okay. This book, you will touch it. And well, first of all, it's very French because she spent her last years of her life in a cave in France. And it's just. Okay. I have goosebumps it, all yeah. over my legs. Okay. Done. Yeah. Sophia, just thanks. wait. Just, you have to, you have to read this okay. book. Mary Magdalene revealed. I'll send you the link. But anyway, so starting with connection to God, whatever that looks like for the day, sometimes it's like, oh, I want to do moving prayer, which is like, could be worship music or any meditative music and just connecting to like light being in your body and pulling on that source energy and reminding yourself who you are. So that, and then movement, whether that's working out, whatever that needs to happen there. And then I have my prioritization of self which I have a very crazy routine. I take like 20 supplements a day. I take glutathione for my skin. I do the 10 step routine. It's ridiculous. And someone's like, well, how do you have time for all that? Well, I do that while I listen to 
an audiobook on leadership or a masterclass from one of my coaches, or maybe you want access to one of my masterclasses or one of my free trainings, and you DM me the word grow. If you're listening to the podcast, I'll send you one. (laughs) So you can be listening to something educational that lifts you up and lifts up your mindset for the day. So you've got the spiritual stuff in place, but then you have the mental growth, the personal development in place, the leadership, the business growth always learning. And it's always going to be different, always listening to something, even if I'm doing the dishes. So that's my routine there. And then I get started on my business. And for anyone building a business on social media, there's three main things that you need to be doing every single day, non-negotiables. And the first thing is serving your existing clients with integrity, showing up for them first. Secondly, creating more content to go out and get more clients and creating effective content. And then three, putting the business systems in place that are going to give you freedom and flow in your life. And if you need help with any of those things, I'm happy to help you with it. A DM away. If you want to just pick my brain, happy to help and send you whatever free training is going to be right for you and where you're at scaling your business. I work with a lot of therapists and spiritual coaches. So I would love to help you, but that's it. That's the three steps. If every day you do that, you can go to bed with a smile on your face being like, okay, my relationship with God's stronger. Yeah. I'm where I need to be. I'm always growing and I'm taking care of my clients. And the reason it's so important to really be growing, and this is the biggest takeaway ever. And I know this wasn't about branding, but if you're building a business or even if you're a mother, you have to hold the vision for everyone who is around you. And leaders hold the vision. And you can't do that if you don't have a vision for yourself. And if you want to sell on social media, you got to paint a picture of where you're going next, deepening your practices, whatever you're selling, deepening your results and how you've done it for clients. Yeah. So always be painting that vision and you'll see yourself sell more. A hundred percent agree. And I mean, the simplicity in this is something I love, the simplicity and the flexibility in it to prioritize God, to prioritize self, to prioritize business with the forefront being the serving of clients. It's like when people say to me, how do you have time for these things? It's like, literally, how could I not? Because without setting what you're saying, without setting the vision, the impact is is gone. Gone. (laughs) Exactly. Is gone. And when it comes to the service of the clients, you know, I was connecting with somebody that I love the other day and someone had asked her like, why are you even selling anymore? Like you have enough money to, and this misunderstanding that we have that the only reason we sell is to make money. Yes. I love money. I love money. More please, more please, more please. Like there's more please. And (laughs) there's something really gorgeously attractive when you don't need it and you serve because you serve because you serve yeah. because of how much we actually receive yeah. from that. Like it's so yummy. It yeah. is. I love it. I'm able to scholarship people now into my program and it's like, cause oh I get God. to, yeah. cause I get to, and it's coming from such a grounded place when you show up and when you're, you know who yeah. you are, you know, the value you bring to the table. And I know you've made a lot of money and I want to have you on my podcast to talk about it, but it's like what people are saying, okay, but then why are you still doing things? Because what's life without purpose? 100%. You've got to do, I mean, I know for me, I would love to like do my skin and go to the gym and da, 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 but I don't know about you, Tara, but you seem like a purpose-driven woman. When I go on a vacation, I've got four days in me, four days, and then I'm itching to like create content or come up with an <laughs> offer. So I like, always like, if you look at the past, I don't know how many years that I've been traveling, I always create a new offer when I'm traveling. I, would, I don't mean to. It's not like I'm going to go to France and I'm going to create a new offer. I'll be in the south of France with my husband and I'm like, oh, we should do that Belle Vie, like a beautiful one. And I, I, I'm writing an opt-in page in my the book I'm reading with a, it because it's like the embodiment of it. It's not, I need to do this. I have to work. There's something wrong. I need to fill a space. It's like, this is pouring through me. The life that I'm living is pouring through me and I want to share it. Period. Like what we talk about within A Course in Miracles, what you share increases. This is the base Mm. foundational. Like, how could we not? Yeah. How can we not? And as women, whether you think you're an entrepreneur or not, we are all creators. hundred percent. 
we don't feel fulfilled without creating something. And you don't have to be a mother, but you need to be birthing something to feel that satisfaction and joy in your day. And if you're not, then look at what you were birthing in the past. If you felt happy and you felt more fulfilled in the past, then what were you creating? That's it. Like creation equals joy. Like yes. If, if we're, we are alive when we're creating, you know? Yes. Okay. I have another question for you. Since you are such a master queen at the socials, and yes. I know that you're supporting a lot of women in different life stage, like what is the biggest advice that you would give yeah. to women who are desiring to have more of a presence inside yeah. of social media? So good. There's so many places to go with this. But the first thing I would say is, especially whenever you go to tell your story, tell your story, because that's going to be what helps you go viral. But tell it strategically. And your story is also, let me back up. Your story is just going to help you go viral, bring in sales, connect you to people, make them go, me too, I'm not alone, for so many good reasons. But we all know that you're probably wanting to do this for a business, for a purpose to help people. But as a business, do not do this strategically until you're ready for it, because you need to have some systems in place to be able to capture the leads. Otherwise, you will go viral. And I've had clients come to me who go, oh, I'm not really wanting to start with the systems right now. I just want to start with the content. Well, look, I know how to create some viral content. They get a $20 million, a $20 million view, not dollar, 20 million well, view video. Let's take the $20 million. Dollars. <laughs> no, we'll take the 20 million. Yes. But in all authenticity, I haven't helped someone create 20 million yet in dollars, <laughs> but 20 million views. I have helped clients at $30,000 months, which is incredible. Yeah. If you are a coach or you're a therapist who already has a practice and you're like, I just want to go deeper and I need systems in place. And I need the right content that's going to be able to do it. The right sales process. I can help you with that. But to make sure you have these things in place before you start creating content is vital. I was a social media strategist for content, just content Mm -hmm. for nine years and social media manager. And I was really great at creating it. I was really good at seeing consistent 2 million, 200,000 to 2 million views, even up to 12 million views and doing this for brands and being the face of these brands, being able to go from concept, creation, production, script, everything. But then for myself, struggling to learn how to sell. And then I spent $20,000 investing in coaching in that way and funneling and was like, okay, I figured it out. Now I'm going to put it all in one place for my clients. So they don't have to pay $20,000 to learn how to do this. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So, I mean, that's just such a, I feel like anybody listening, depending on what they're being called to receive from this conversation, like we said in the beginning, like we're going to go where we're called to go and everyone will see what they're meant to. For me, let me just say personally, what I have received from this conversation. Again, you're exquisite. You're walking love. You're extraordinarily wise inside the physical and the spiritual world. So anyone inside the Elegant Femme community who wants to work with you, who wants to know more, tell us all the places where they can find you. And I know you seeded a couple of things, which I love. Brilliant. (laughs) The <laughs> DM and grow, which was, I, I remember that one. Where else? Anything else you want yes. to drop here? I like to have conversations. I think people forget that social media is social. So just hop into my DMs on Instagram and you can DM me the word advice, even more than grow, because grow is going to send you a first automation that's going to send you one of the growth courses that I have. But if you don't want to just grow and you want to see how you could work with me long term and really build the brand of your dreams and become the icon and make social media your world stage, Just start with DMing me advice. Tell me where you're at. Tell me where you want to go. You don't have to come to me with a business in place, but you do need to have a very good idea of why God put you on this planet to help people. And then you could also be coming to me and say, Sophia, I hit $20,000 months in my practice, but I would love to hit 30,000. How do we get there? And then we could put together a strategy for that as well. I love this so much. I am so grateful that God dropped you into my life. Oh. It has been an absolute honor and pleasure. Thank you for all the yeses you said, Sophia, to get here. Mm. Every Thank you. single one of them. Thank You're you. going to make me cry. Thank I you so much for holding so this. I mean it so much. I mean it so much. Really, truly. 
Thank you for taking a stand for all that's true. Thank you. And thank you for holding space for not only a younger woman to be on the show, but to share how proud I am of who I am so that anyone listening, maybe they have a kid or a niece who's queer and maybe it will add that much more acceptance into their hearts. Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, it's been an honor. Thank you so much for being here. Thank Ah. you. (laughs) Thank you, Mother Energy. I need it. Oh, so good. As queer women, that's women with an X, because of course we are inclusive here. As I was saying, as queer women, we haven't always been lifted up or celebrated. We have often felt left out and put down in places that historically haven't welcomed us. In fact, we have been conditioned by society to be grateful for mere tolerance. My resilient LGBTQ plus IA community, I am talking to you. I'll bet you've recognized the spark that God put in your heart, your unique calling to impact the world and only a way that you can. A business idea, a brand to build, a coaching program to start, the art to create, the song to sing, the book to write, that relationship you long to build. But that little light inside your soul has often been blown out by the people around you, leaving you conditioned to play small and not step into your full potential. You are not alone. And it's never too late to truly live your most authentic dream life. I would know. I came out late in life, nearly 30, a couple years ago after being bullied for months inside a country club. Right outside of my weights class, I was assaulted by a bigoted woman who couldn't stand my queerness. She physically pushed me, so I had a meeting with management. I told them I didn't feel safe. I brought forth evidence, and guess what? They did nothing. Sadly, this is normal, but in order to create change, we have to be brave enough to be the change ourselves. So I did a thing. I started my own virtual country club for queer women, a safe place for us to create meaningful connections and grow. So if you're looking for a love connection, networking opportunities, or coaching to live your best freedom life, you want to apply to be a part of our incredible community of purpose-driven, passionate queer women. Join Queer Women Rising, the online queer country club for growth-minded women ready to level up in life and love. To apply, DM me the word rising on Instagram at Sophia Spolino or chat me the word rising on sophiaspolino.com. Now, beyond hosting Queer Women Rising, I am a personal brand coach and social media strategist. If you give me a moment to tell you about what I do, I can share how I can help you, just like I've helped many clients before get famous online and make more money. If you're an exhausted coach or service provider, ready to scale your business for real, or you're just getting started building your dream brand from scratch, And if you're ready to build your own profitable personal brand, I can show you how in six months or less. But why should you take my word for it? Well, I've spent over 10 years in the social media marketing industry, amassing over 400,000 followers across platforms like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube, as well as hosting a top charting podcast, building a successful service provider business, and coaching powerful women to build purpose-driven, profitable personal brands. Yeah, I have the social media and sales process strategies that can help you finally make the money you deserve. Because I want to help you build your dream business that gives you time, freedom, and makes real money. So for a limited time, I'm giving away your first steps to go from less than 5k months and advance to 10 to 20k months. Grab my newly revamped profitable personal brand blueprint, my proven framework to build yourself a personal brand that motivates, inspires, and sells so that your business can thrive the way it should. Just go to the link in the show notes. Whether you're a novice at creating or you're feeling stuck, 
Hitting a plateau in your business that once had consistent revenue and need guidance, support, and coaching to get to your next level? I invite you to book a strategy call to speak with either me or my team to see if we'd be the right fit to work with each other inside of the Profitable Personal Brand six-month coaching program. Mind you, I am extremely selective and this coaching program is not for everyone, and I'm not afraid to say it. I am only taking on serious, purpose-driven, and committed queer women and allies inside of my community. If that's you, book your free strategy call. The link is in the show notes. And if you feel yourself come alive and love listening to Queer Women Rising, please leave me a five-star rating with a kind review wherever you listen to podcasts. Be sure to share the show with a powerful woman you know. And remember, when you're called to do something greater in life, love, or business, you will be uncomfortable until you move. So get up and go get what you want. Let's rise. Let's rise.